In this video, I'll show you how to make an automatic plant watering system using an Arduino. Here, I'm just demonstrating it with a small container of dirt, but you can use it on an indoor potted plant, indoor garden, or if you waterproof the entire system, you could even use it outside. Let's do an overview of the components of the system. We have an Arduino Uno, which is controlling everything. We have a breadboard with the red and green LEDs as indicators, the red LED for when the soil is too dry, the green LED for when the soil is wet. We have a reservoir of water, which I've added some food coloring to, just so it's a little easier to see going through the tubes. We have a small DC pump, and then I have a container of dirt with a soil moisture sensor. This is a resistive soil moisture sensor that works by measuring the resistance between these two probes. When that resistance is high, that means the soil is dry. When the resistance is lower, it means the soil is wet. The resistance also depends on the contact area between the probes and the soil. So you see when I've moved it up out of the soil here, the resistance goes up and it thinks it's dry again, but when I press it back down into the soil and it's in contact with that moist soil, the LED comes back on. I've disconnected the pump so it's not running while I'm filming this part of the video, but the Arduino is programmed such that when the soil is too dry, the pump will automatically kick on adding water to the container until the moisture reaches a certain threshold and then the pump will automatically shut off. Here I'm using a relatively small pump that says it's rated for six volts, but the data sheet actually says it will run on five to six volts and it only requires a few hundred milliamps of current so it can be powered directly from the Arduino. And I'm just using a tiny little container of dirt as an example here, but if you were watering an entire garden or something like a larger potted house plant, you might need a larger pump. So we will talk about how you can power a larger pump a little bit later in the video. But for now, let's switch over to the computer and take a look at the circuit and code in a little more detail. First, let's do an overview of the circuit. Now, if you are new to Arduino and this looks too overwhelming, we do have an entire Arduino tutorial series that you can find linked in the description of this video that will cover all of these separate parts individually. So we have a video about LEDs, we have a video about the soil moisture sensor, and we have a video about controlling a pump or a motor. Here, I am going to talk about them all together as a system. First, let's quickly look at the LEDs. I'm not gonna spend much time on them since they are usually one of the first things you will work with when using an Arduino. I have two LEDs as indicators, one red, one green, although of course the color doesn't really matter. You could choose other colors connected to two of the Arduino's IO pins. And don't forget your current limiting resistor to avoid burning out the LEDs. Next, we have the soil moisture sensor, which has three pins, power, ground, and signal. So ground, I'm going to connect ground on the breadboard. Signal, it is an analog signal, so it is going to go over to one of the analog in pins on the Arduino. And for power, I am actually going to connect it to one of the Arduino's I.O. pins instead of connecting it directly to five volts. That is because these probes on the sensor will begin to oxidize over time and the longer you leave the sensor powered on, the faster they will oxidize. Since you are measuring soil moisture, you don't need to do it that often. Maybe once a minute or even once an hour or once a day is enough. So we're going to use this pin to just briefly power the sensor on whenever we need to take a reading. Finally, we have the pump, which in Tinkercad here, I am representing with a DC motor because Tinkercad doesn't have a separate part for a pump but their operation is the same. They just have a positive and negative wire, but the Arduino's pins cannot provide enough current to drive the pump directly. So we are using a transistor called a MOSFET, and I go into a little more detail about that in the other video about the pump, which again, you can find linked in our Arduino tutorial series. But the very short story here is that this acts kind of like an electronic control valve that lets the Arduino's IO pins, which can only provide up to 20 milliamps each, control something that requires more current from another power source. And in this court, in this case, that power source is the Arduino's five volt supply, which can provide more current than the individual IO pins. If your pump requires more than five volts or more than a few hundred milliamps, then it is a good idea to use an external power supply, like an external wall adapter or battery pack. And again, I go over how to do that and how to wire everything in the separate video about pumps. Now let's open up the code and take a look at that. So at the beginning, as usual, we define a bunch of variables that we'll need later in the program. I have a bunch of constants defined for my various pins, like the sensor reading, sensor power, both LEDs, and the pump pin. I have a variable for the sensor reading, 
Then I have a delay time variable for that delay between readings, which here I have set to just one millisecond because the simulation can run kind of slow in Tinkercad sometimes, but in real life, you would probably want a much longer delay. I then define a threshold variable. So the analog read on the Arduino is going to give a number between 0 and 1023, corresponding to the soil moisture level, where a higher number means less resistance or wetter soil. So I'm going to define a threshold for the difference between wet and dry. And I have just kind of made this number for the up for the example here. But in real life, you would want to calibrate this for the soil you're using and the plant you are watering. You don't want to over or underwater your plant. Next, in the setup function, I set all of my pins as outputs, and I also initialize serial communication so I can print out the sensor reading. Then in the loop function, again, I'm not leaving the sensor powered on all the time, so I'm going to use digital write to set the sensor power pin high, have a very short delay just to make sure it has time to fully power up, then use the analog read function to take a reading from that sensor pin. And then remember to turn your sensor off because you don't want it to oxidize. So I have digital write again to set the sensor power low. Then I use serial print to print out the sensor value to the serial monitor, which is again useful for calibrating the sensor and figuring out where that threshold between wet and dry soil is. And then finally, I have my if statement if else statement that is going to turn on the appropriate LEDs and turn the pump on or off. So if the sensor reading is greater than that threshold I've defined. That means the soil is wet enough, so I'm going to turn the red LED off, turn the green LED on to say everything's okay, and turn the pump off. However, if the sensor reading drops below that threshold, then I'm going to turn the red LED on to say, hey, I need water, turn the green LED off, and then I'm going to turn the pump on. Then I'm going to wait before I take my next reading. So you do have to be careful with the delay time the way I have the code written now. For example, if I set this to an hour, then it is going to wait for an hour before it gets back to the top of the loop and checks the if statement again, meaning the pump would stay on that entire time, which could maybe overflow your plant depending on the flow rate. So you might want to change this, for example, if you only want to check the moisture level once an hour or once a day to really extend the life of your sensor, change the code to run the pump for a fixed amount of time, maybe one minute, five minutes, 10 minutes, whatever makes sense for your plant, and then shut the pump off again with the digital write command before this delay so you're not just accidentally leaving the pump on until you check the sensor again. There are plenty of other things you could do with the program. For example, you might want to define multiple different thresholds and you could use the analog write command instead of the digital write command to run the pump at variable speeds. Or you could even expand your system to have multiple sensors and multiple pumps for multiple plants. There are also many things to consider about your physical setup, such as how you're going to protect your Arduino from water and dirt and what you're going to use for your reservoir of water. All of these will vary depending on your specific setup. For written instructions for this project and over a thousand other fun hands-on science and engineering projects, visit our website www.sciencebuddies.org.